What's up, everybody? It's Keefe from Ghost Cult Magazine, ghostcultmag.com, and I'm here with Laurent from Kilter. How are you doing? I'm good. Very well. Welcome back to New York City. Thank you. Uh, the brand new album is Axiom, out now on your record label, which is awesome. Uh, it's an incredible album. Um, it's a different kind of heavy, uh, for sure. Um, I think it would be an oversimplification uh, to classify it, but... Uh, Pleased to be here with you here at uh, New Blue 151 here in the Lower East Side, one of the birthplaces of jazz in New York City. Uh, it's actually the block where Charlie Parker used to live, which I always love talking about. Um, but yeah, we're here for a record release party. You've just been on tour in Europe. Um, so I wanted to start, the, this record is amazing, and uh, I wanted to kind of start there and uh, see how you feel now that it's out. And, you know, you guys have been working on it for a long time. The record is out. How does it feel? So thank you for the compliment. And uh, in fact, uh, the project of uh, Kilter, it was um, the following of a project in France I had with uh, some jazz musicians with whom we were playing with the two styles. But it was more in a jazz way. So we did a lot of covers of Metallica, for example, in the jazz way with a lot of improvisation. And I wanted to go further. And I came to New York because I knew that uh, here there is a lot of mix of music styles like uh, metal music and jazz music and I have, a, I have a lot of references here like the work of uh, John Zorn or Mike Patton or that kind of people. Uh, I have so many names in my head it's like it, it should it would uh, take too much time to, to talk about everybody. But so I came here and I met uh, people I knew already by, uh, by name and a bit like uh, Kenny Gorowski. And um, he advised me to contact uh, Edward Zondag Sui. And well, Edward Zondag had a band, uh, it still exists, they are working actually on a new album, um, which is called uh, Jersey Band. It's a jazz metal band, but uh, really around brasses a lot. And uh, it was a very good idea because now we, we, we were able to play in New York City in jazz venues and to improvise a lot of music and to start to compose and to try things um, on stage, in fact. And during one year, we tried to, to make the, the repertoire. And uh, when it was almost ready, we went to a studio with Mark Urselli. And uh, and there is a result now. It's an axiom, and I'm very happy that you like it. Yeah, oh, it's fantastic. I highly recommend everybody check it out. Uh, even if it, jazz is not you know, the first thing you go to, there's so much jazz that's prominent today in progressive metal that I feel like a lot of people are kind of finding a backdoor into jazz and classic jazz through progressive rock and progressive metal and sort of these confluences of things. Uh, and obviously, you know, Ed Edward and Kenny are unbelievable musicians. A very interesting trio. There's all kinds of trios um, in music and especially in jazz. But I just find the brass, bass, and drums really, really interesting. Obviously, there's other instruments on the record, but... Uh, just that kind of starting base is really uh, interesting to me from a composition standpoint. Uh, I wanted to talk about composition a little bit. Uh, obviously, again, the you know the sort of uh, it, you know interesting combination of of a starting base from bass guitar yourself and uh, Edward and Kenny. Um, where does that take you when you when you compose strictly with the uh, kilter in mind for these instruments, or did you have compositions and then think about sort of building the band around them? It's a bit the both, in fact, because uh, in fact, we have a tendency to compose as jazz musicians. I mean, writing music like scores, etc. And um, as I said before, we were on stage and to try things, to try riffs, to improvise things, to improvise forms. And from that improvisation, we try to keep some riffs, some, some ideas, some sound, etc. And, and um, in fact, it was like a game to try to take the essence of what is metal music and what is jazz music, what kind of sound, what kind of, uh, um, how can I say that, what kind of uh, phrase we can play, which are in the jazz <coughs> field, which one in the metal field. And it's completely subjective, in fact, because uh, it depends on the influences of everybody. and. Um, the composition is um, something very 
um, personal because uh, Ed is writing music in a different way than me, and Kenny is different too. He's more into improvisation and uh, experimental things. So the, all the fields we are used to play, we try to do that together and to put that on stage uh, and, uh, on the album. I don't know if it's clear. No, very, very. Uh, it's very, and uh, yeah, Edward is magnificent. His playing is unbelievable. It's almost like a second bass, which allows you to do all kinds of it's things. A you know, it's kind of basically a second bass because it's such a like a baritone uh, instrument. It's a bass saxophone. Right? Bass saxophone, yeah. right? Yeah. Fan- so we are really two bass players. Two basses yeah. and a drum, even. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Like I said, I think there's a lot of. Uh, so much to explore. The record holds up on repeat listens. I listened to it so many times before it came out. And uh, yeah, and, and also in the lead up to this chat. So uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, I know you mentioned Marcus earlier and you guys have all made collectively uh, over a hundred records between the three of you, I'm, I think, uh, and many compositions. So what does Marcus bring to the table as a producer? You've all produced records, you've been on records. What, did, what do you seek from a producer like Marcus when you make a project like this? That's a very interesting case question because it was really the basis of the work with Mark. I didn't want Mark to be just a technical personal. I just wanted him to co-produce the album with us. And uh, usually uh, we are very used to use a lot of effects, you know, on stage, like distortion and everything. But we decided to not use them in the studio. It's like everything was dry. The saxophone, the drums, the bass, the bass almost. But most, most of the sound we use were dry. And then it was the turn to Mark to, um, to, 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 to put all the effects to, to, to push all the music into the metal music sometimes. And uh, after that, we had to rehearse again the tunes and to try to, to have that sound, that sound we had in the studio after the mixes. And then we try to um, choose some effects like overdrives, distortions, to be like the album, in fact. Yeah. And we needed three days of rehearsal to do that. Yeah. Only three days? Uh, yes, for us, it's a lot, in fact. Right, yeah, yeah I was going to say. Uh, and again, the, the you coming here to find artists to work with, and you live in France, so, you know, challenging, right? Like to bring everybody together for a tour or to record, and you're, you know... Just uh, I think about those things. Uh, music is so different today. It used to be, you know, everybody had to be in the same basement or the same rehearsal studio, and now you can live across the world and send ideas to somebody in a one one click. Yeah, yeah, and I learned a lot when I moved to New York because I didn't really know how people work here. And uh, in France, it's really different. Here, uh, I mean, in jazz, jazz field, I, I don't know if it's the same in the metal scene here in New York, but. In the jazz scene, nobody has time to do nothing, to rehearse, to prepare things, to, and um, I had to, I had to deal with that. In fact, that's why I say that three days of rehearsal it's like a lot, and to have that, I had to take everybody in France, in Paris, and to put them in a real rehearsal space. You know, you don't move, you don't, you can't do nothing else, and then it was possible to work in that way. Nice. Uh, again. Uh you couldn't tell from the record, like the performances are seamless. And uh, I think it's a really exciting record. And uh, again, I know because of sort of the relationships of the members of the band, a lot of metal press and fans are interested in the record. Obviously, Kenny is in a couple of very prominent underground metal bands that have a huge followings. But, you know, it's got a different kind of heaviness. I love the the uh, the heaviness of the song with Andromeda and Pear. Uh, the guest performances is a thing I wanted to touch on. Um, how did you select those? I mean, two great artists, but I wanted to ask how you selected them and if you wrote those parts, you know, those songs with them in mind or did after the songs were written, you, you thought about using them? About the guest, you mean? Yeah. In fact, um, at the beginning, Andromeda was uh, expected to just write the li- lyrics on the one tune and, uh, and we asked uh, Angela Gosso to participate and she had no time to do it and mm. I said to Andromeda in fact you will do it I don't know why you could not do that so yeah. and it was really uh, interesting to do that and um, th- she did a very good job in fact and about Pear uh, I uh, it's on one tune of mine it's really called Bassard and I let the space for a guitar solo I knew it would have been for a guitar solo 
And I had in my dream to ask Pear because uh, we are, I like a lot how Pear plays. And, uh, and in fact, I just asked him if, uh, if he uh, is okay to do that. And he, he said yes, without no knowing nothing about the tune and everything. So, and uh, it took one month to work on it and to find how the way how to make it, and he made it. He made it. Amazing, it's Pear Nelson of Meshuga, everybody. And uh, he is amazing, and that solo is amazing. And that's actually my favorite song on the album. Um, I know it's a difficult question to ask, but do you have a favorite track or a track that you're enjoying playing live now that the record is out? That's very hard to say, because for me, it's a journey. In fact, the whole album, it's 40 minutes. That's Korean one from the beginning to the end. So um, I think I could say Accent Fear. The first, the first track of the album. Mm. That's very exciting to play on stage. That's very powerful. And uh, I think I could say this one, yeah. Also awesome. Uh, just a couple more questions. I'll let you get back to your uh, pre-show ritual uh, as the club is filling up with people, which is exciting. Um, I definitely wanted to ask, I know that you have you know a long history as a live musician and improvisational you know, master of the bass guitar. Uh, obviously a lot of things you mentioned come from improv. Um, when you play these songs live and, and even the material from the EP previously, uh, do you experiment? Do the songs change or do you try to keep them somewhat faithful to the recording? Actually, the form stays the same, but inside that we don't know exactly what will happen. So we try to, to, to keep uh, the tune itself, but we, we, didn't, we don't really change things. But we propose new things, new ways to play the the new energy or dynamics. But that's pretty much the same the same tunes, yes. Not the same lanes, but uh, that's the same tunes, yes. Right. And then I, de I definitely wanted to take the opportunity to highlight your uh, your label and ask you, uh, you know, if there's anything we can expect in the coming year or anything new coming out from the label that we can hype up and share. Actually, there is a few projects we are working on a new EP or album with Andromeda and Afia. And uh, extemporization, it's really only improvised music with uh, Malcolm Braff, which, uh, who is a uh, Swiss, and Jean-Christophe Calvé, a French drummer. So normally it should be in 2020 or beginning of 2021. And actually, we are recording new material with Kilter for an album next year. And uh, yes, things like that. We are never stopping. Right. You, you seem really hardworking and prolific. Like you seem to always be working on some kind of combination of projects. It's very impressive. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. That's the artist path. You work all the time. How do you know if you're any good if you're not working all the time, right? That's true. But for me, it's not working. So. No, I know. It's, <laughs> it's a, a pleasure and it's a art. Yeah. It drives us. Uh, if you like interviews like this with me and Laurent, please like and subscribe to our channel. I'm Keith from Ghost Cult Magazine, ghostcultman.com. We are out.